Hey everyone, welcome back to another Paintcast. This is Ashton, your uh, bearded host behind the camera. We're coming at you today with some Gritzy. Wrath of Kings Gritzy. Gritzy, however you say it. I don't know. I haven't even played the game yet. I don't know how it goes. But from what I hear, it's a pretty cool game. I don't... Uh, I don't have time to play games anymore. All I do anymore is paint. Paint, 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 paint. So, we're going to be working on finishing this guy up today. Working on finishing this girl up, the sword dancer that goes with it. And then the other thing we're going to do, which uh, is a little different uh, from other paint cast uh, uh, streams that I've done is we're going to be working on some basing today. So when Greg asked me to uh, to, to do these guys here, he uh, uh, not only wanted to, to learn you know how to paint, uh, but he also wanted to learn how to base. And he had a very specific idea in mind. Um, he sent me some of these uh, secret weapon miniature bases. And um, this is a, a a, a, from their their line called Lava Flow, and um, on the Secret Weapon Miniature website, they've done this base up a couple different ways. They've done it up as a lava flow. They've done it up as a river. They've done it up as a shoreline. They've done it up as a frozen ground. You know, a few different things. So Greg wanted me to kind of give him my take on how to paint this base to look like a riverbank. Um, so we're going to also be working on that a little bit today too. In fact, we're probably going to start with this because once I get all the airbrushing done, um, it'll need to sit for a day or two before I start doing some of the washes and that sort of thing. So, so we're going to go ahead and start with this one and then we'll come back to these other models here when, once I'm done with my airbrushing. And uh, there's two of them here that he wants me to do. He wants me to do one, um, you know, to doing one version of a of a riverbank or or shoreline, and then one for another one. So these have been washed and primed. They're primed in Vallejo white primer. And what we're going to use here. I, if I remember right, Greg, you've got access to a lot of different uh, varieties of paints, so I think we're going to be okay. So what I'm going to start with, we're going to stick with some browns, okay? We're going to use a uh, Vallejo model color, chocolate brown. We're going to use Vallejo mo model color, flat earth. We're going to use Vallejo model color, dark sand. We're going to use Vallejo model color yellow green, uh, Vallejo model color deck tan, Vallejo model color, uh, oh, I'd like to use neutral gray, I think that'll work, neutral gray, and uh, we might need to kick the green down just a little bit more. So, let's look at, that's too dark, that's too bright. Medium olive, Vallejo game color medium olive. So, you'll notice I've got some greens, okay, I've got some grays, I've got some browns, and then I've got some yellows, okay. And we can even work a little bit of uh, this buff color into there as well. You don't necessarily need to go out and buy all of these, Greg, because that's you know what these are three dollars a pop. You're at two, four, six, eight. That's twenty-five bucks in painting just on your base. The idea though is you want these are some of the colors that you're going to want to use. You're going to want dark browns. You're going to want some greens. You're going to want some yellows. You're going to want some grays. Okay, so that's what's important. Okay. Don't necessarily. I mean, by all means, if you want to go out and get these paints, go get them. Vallejo paints are great, but um, also 
you know, I'm more interested in the colors here than I am anything else. So, what we'll start with, we're going to start with our darkest color. Okay, we're going to start with the chocolate brown, Vallejo Game Color Chocolate Brown. And we're just going to airbrush the um, earthen parts, earthy parts on these bases. Now Vallejo is a little, little trickier paint-wise. You have to um, thin them down a little further. They're not quite as thin as the uh, P3 paints. And most of what I'm, or all of that I'm going to be doing today on these bases, uh, Greg, is all. Um, just airbrush work at this point. We'll come back and do some washes once this paint's had some time to dry. So I've got my uh, uh, chocolate brown in here and I'm just going to kind of generally coat the whole base with the brown color. Turn my hood on. One second here, guys. Okay. And you're covering the whole base where the water is going to be and everything, okay? The same on this one. And on these bases, it's important that you, you spray from different angles because there's a lot of texture on them and you want to make sure and get all that surface nicely covered. Now we'll switch to another color now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, some of the medium olive green and we're going to spray this green into where the water is going to go. All right. Now I know that sounds counterintuitive, water should be blue, right? Well, what we're going to actually do, Anthony, when we're done um, working on this, getting all these paints and washes and dry brushing and everything done, is I'm actually going to show you how to fill this area with a water effect, a clear water effect. And so by doing a dark color as the base for the water, and we put the clear water effect over the top, it'll create a more natural looking water effect, a more realistic looking water effect. Uh, you can also use, if you don't want to use a dark, dark green, you can also use a dark blue. And in fact, depending on how this looks, I may end up uh, mixing a little blue in with this color and um, using that to, to darken things up a little bit more because this green is actually looking pretty pretty bright. You can see it's a, it's a fairly bright green. So I think we're going to actually, just right now, I'll mix a little bit of blue into it. Uh, 
uh, dark sea blue, Vallejo game color dark sea blue. Just gonna add a few drops of that real fast. And that looks a little better. That looks a little better. A lot darker green. Okay. And I'm not going to worry too much about the paint not being dry at this point. Um, it's not a huge deal with airbrushing. And now the, the dark green is just going to go right where the water is going to go. The little bit of overspray you see there is not a big deal. In fact, I'm going to actually gradient this green back a little bit. Like so. Kind of fade that in there a little bit. Same thing here now. See how that looks. All right. Cleaning this out real fast. And the next color I'm going to move on to is the uh, yellow green, Vallejo model color, yellow green. And I may not end up using the, uh, the gray colors at, at this point. I may come back to those when it comes to brushing. Let me do some brush work. Okay, now where I'm going to focus this yellow green at is going to be kind of on the edges here of this green. Uh, working the blend into the brown just a little bit more.
see how that's starting to look there. I think we're going to go with some dark sand now. Uh, Vallejo game color or model color dark sand. Now the reason why I'm making the color darker closer to the water is to add to the illusion of wet or moisture by making it a little darker closer to the water. It's going to look as if the ground is more wet at that point. That's kind of the idea. Okay, now with this very light yellow color, I'm going to kind of hit this outside edge here. I'm going to take a Vallejo Monocolor Flat Earth and I'm going to mix that in and I'm actually um, I'm actually not going to um, clean my my brush uh, my airbrush bowl out with this one because um, I want a little bit of the dark sand color to to blend with it at this point and kind of give me a an in-between color a slightly lar lighter earthy brown color. Okay, and then I kind of want to try and hit the intermediate area now between the two colors. see how that's looking and you know at this point it, it, it looks very airbrushed and overworked but as we come back in with some washes and stuff like that it's really going to to make a big difference um, these these uh, subtle colors underneath I mean this is almost kind of like um, like pre shading in a way Greg where we're just um, you know creating some some underlying colors that are going to affect the overall uh, picture when we're done. So, um, so that's where these are going to be. These have got to now dry for the next uh, next day or two. So when I stream again, um, these guys will be ready to go for me to do their washes and glazes and, and that sort of thing on. And also, more importantly, the uh, water effects, which I think will look really cool when we're done. So give me just a second here to clean my airbrush out, and then we will get on to painting some stuff by hand.
Okay, so where we left off last time working on these Wrath of King miniatures was the werewolf here has had all the armor um, color applied with washes um, same with the sword a little bit of work done on the hair um, so at this point we're ready to add some more uh, highlights to the hair um, there's some leather work that I want to do here and then we're going to highlight the metals and uh, he's gonna be done so and then with the sword dancer she's just about there too um, need to do the hair finish out the uh, leathers on, on her shoes also some washes on the horn, the horns and then she's about done as well so let me get my wet palette Someone in chat is asking what miniatures are these from? These are Wrath of King miniatures. The faction is Goritzi, or Goretzi, or Goritzki, however you say it. They are a faction of vampires and werewolves, and uh, that's about all I know about the game. So, apologies. I don't play Wrath of Kings, I'm just painting them for someone who does play them. So, all right. So, um, for the leather color, Greg, we'll start with um, Vallejo game color leather or model color leather brown. Uh, actually, no, that's not the color we were using. We were using P3 bootstrap leather. Wondering if you guys in chat that are watching at home can let me know how does the audio sound? I've uh, done something a little different with my mic, and I'm just curious uh, what your guys' take on it is. So, um, oh, and it looks like I did forget an armor plate right here on the knee. So, uh, all right, so let me uh, just start base coating the leather areas on here. And again, this is a P3 bootstrap leather. After we're done base coating this, we're going to wash it with a little bit of brown ink and a little bit of uh, Army Painter Strong Tongue. And then we'll do some highlights on it.
All right, this uh, bootstrap color is just kind of the basic leather color that we've been using throughout the whole uh, whole project here. There's some little detail there that I'll need to pick out in a metallic color. Okay, so uh, before I do the washes on that, let's uh, do some work on the hair. Now the hair is already a very dark brown, so we're going to use a little bit of uh, rucksack tan mixed with a little bit of bootstrap leather to create the highlights. We've already done the shadows. And for the highlights, we're just going to drag the side of the brush across the ridges of the hair in a couple of spots. Um, we don't want to get too too crazy with it. And try to try to um, you know, not do too strong of a highlight on you know, areas where the shadows are because we don't want to take away from those shadows. see how that hair looks. We'll go straight rucksack tan now again and uh, apply these highlights to a smaller area than before. And try to just keep it keep it more or less you know on the tip of things. See how that looks. Uh, someone's asking in chat if I made this miniature. Uh, no, I did not. This is from the Wrath of Kings line. It's a game that's produced, I believe, by the same folks that do Cool Mini or Not, if I remember right. I uh, have some talent when it comes to painting, but when it comes to sculpting, um, that is an area that I've not experimented a lot in and I feel like my skills are very subpar. Maybe one day. Okay. That's the tail there. I got some metallic paint to get this knee that I forgot to get. We'll also grab some uh, P3 Radiant Platinum and a dry brush. We'll get the highlights while we're there. Getting 
the knee pad here. Piece of armor that he has on his knee. It's going to need some time to dry before I put a second coat on that. Pick out some of the other details here. And that's drying. Okay, now for the uh, for the armor on the arms and then on the sword there, uh, we'll use P3 Radiant Platinum, and you're just going to dry brush that on, Greg. Uh, no point in being fancy. You know, again, we're looking for tabletop, uh, something that looks good on the tabletop and is ready to go. So you don't want to spend an exuberant amount of time on on all these things because you'll burn yourself out and you'll never have a painted army. So the trick is you want to use techniques that will get you through things quickly. And so just uh, very lightly drag that brush over the highlights here. You already see the difference that makes. And you notice I'm not doing the whole thing, I'm just doing where the where the highlights would be. Right? Because I don't want to make the whole thing look highlighted, just where the light be catching the edges of the armor. That looks pretty good. I'll get some washes here now. Army Painter Strong Tone, P3 Brown Ink. Brown ink gets applied to uh, to all the leather first. Excuse me, not the brown ink. The Army Painter Strong Tone gets applied first. My apologies. I'm gonna let that. Also pull down into the chain there, and then on the leather wrap that's around his tail. And then inside the waist there. So 
eggs. Hand right here. Okay. Now while that's drying, come to the sword dancer here. Now she's already had the uh, um, dark, uh, strong tone applied on the leather leggings there. So I'm just going to go right into the ink, the brown ink. And you don't want to do a concentrated mix of it. You want to make sure that brown ink is watered down just a touch. It makes it just a little more forgiving that way. And now we're just going to wash leather leggings here and your boots Okay, let's get the uh, P3 armor wash now. Sword dancer here. And this we're going to put on the uh, armor plates back here. dragging the brush over the details on the skirt here. Do the same thing. We're going to achieve the same effect rather, excuse me. Okay. And while we're here, sword And then, while that's kind of setting up for a second, I would do want to take some brown ink here back to the werewolf now. And I'm just going to flood the inside of the mouth with the brown ink. Now it looks a bit strong like blood right now, but it's actually going to work out really well for um, to make it look like the gums in the inside of the mouth. And we're going to go through that here. And when it dries, but for now we're just getting this first initial 
bit of ink down. And the strong tone still isn't wet, so we're going to continue to let that dry on that one. Come back to the sword dancer now. Now what we did for the white is we based all the white in Menoth White base. We then washed it in Army Painter Soft Tone. Now we're going to highlight it. We're just going to do some simple edge highlighting. That's all we're doing here. Um, we're doing a Menoth White highlight as the color for that. And we're just going to pick out some of the details. If this proves to be too white, then we'll just uh, use a little bit of Menoth White base instead. this uh, collar back here. Try not to get the white into the, the space between. You don't want to lose the detail on this. It's almost like what I'm doing is a bit of a dry brush in a way. So you see how she's looking there. And I still haven't figured out yet how I'm going to do the hair. I think, I think we're just going to have to do it in like a 
I want to do red because red's going to draw your attention right to that face. So, um, well, let's try this. Let's try a little bit of diluted red ink and just see what, or brown ink, see how that looks. Right it is, I guess. That'll work. I want to do a little bit of rucksack tan and a touch of the, the Army Painter Strong Toe. And I'm just going to kind of define some of these spots here. And the shading. Darken things up just a little bit. Again, this is just a a little bit of a mixture of uh, dark army painter dark tone and a touch of uh, rucksack tan. Good. So give the blade a little bit of a wash here. done. Looks pretty good. Alright. And then this guy should be ready for a little bit of a wash now on the, on the leather. And then inside the mouth, just to cut down on that intensity of that red a little bit from the brown wash, I'm just going to wash a little bit of the uh, Army Painter Strong Tone into there. And then we'll come back here in a sec and uh, get the teeth. P3 Thamar Black. One eye socket.
I actually like to, when I'm doing beasts and stuff like this, I actually like to keep the eye just a solid color. So in this case, I'm just going to be putting a bit of white in here. I think by keeping them a solid color like this, it uh, adds to the beastly, crazed looking nature of the animal, or the monster, or the beast. I am going to be putting a slight wash of uh, like a turquoise or a blue ink onto this just to tone it down and give the eye just a bit of a glowing type effect. Got a little more black here. Touch up the spot. a little, little better as far as the eye goes. Something on this side, just touch it up a bit. No wolf or dog would be complete without a black nose, right? A little bit of blue, signal blue highlight. I'm going to thin this down quite a bit. And wash this over the eye. Now for the teeth, you know, really the, the molding here isn't the best, so you know, I'm not going to pretend to get all the teeth, but we're just going to, like so, and then on the bottom. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do on those teeth is just one more time, another wash of Army Painter Strong Tone. And there you have it. So that completes these two models.
Gritzy Sword Dancer and a Gritzy Werewolf. These guys are good to go. So Greg, the last installment we're going to be doing on this will be in a couple of days. And we'll be coming back to your bases and showing you how to finish those guys up. So for the rest of you guys, thanks for watching. Um, appreciate you guys being here. And I may, I don't think I'm going to be back on in about 10 minutes. I'll probably be back on later tonight. So probably around 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Mountain Time is when I'm planning on hopping back on. Um, at that point, we've got some Retribution that we're working on, and we've also got Bradigus that we're working on as well. So thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, make sure to contact me at redmodeling at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash painting. In the meantime, guys, thanks a lot. Keep your brushes moving, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys next time. Thanks.